Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. My name is Peter Bergwa. Thanks for joining me. If today is your first time joining me, um, this platform is there to empower and ignite people all over the continent, Africa, where people that we have also got an opportunity to study abroad, we share our experience, we share our knowledge, we share our, our skills and experience with other people, our brothers back home, so that they can be able to also learn from our mistakes, our academic trajectory, where the part we use, the thing that we have been doing to also um, got into this level. Today I have my sister, Aram, and he's in the United States of America, where he's going to share some of her experience with us. What I want you to do is that you can follow her on, you can follow her on Aram, I think Aram Consult. If you're watching me on YouTube, if you're watching me on Facebook, if you're watching me on Twitter or TikTok, you can follow her. Uh, he is creating a lot of valuable information that I believe is going to help you. Today's video or interview will help you to sail through your academic journey. Sister, welcome to my page. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I learned um, we have we have tried our possible best to link up, but today is the day that we, we have agreed to come live. Yes, today is the day the Lord has made. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my sister. So, um, school application. Let's go straight to the point. School application is U.S. and Canada. Um, let's say you, today you are focusing on U.S. because you're in the United States of America. Um, in terms of course selection, if somebody wants to come and study in U.S., what based on the knowledge that you have gotten right now, what are the, some of the things the person should do? Some of the programs, how you can able to stay through. So, the first one is in terms of selection of the program, what should the person do? Okay, thank you very much um, for having me here and hello to everyone watching us. So when it comes to um, the program selection, it varies by school. The curriculum is mostly different in every school that you go to. So first of all, you need to look at the, curric uh, the curriculum, see what they do and um, see if this is something you want to do. You have to look at it in terms of the career progression you want, because you can go and study, let's say, nursing in a particular school, and you want to be an emergency nurse, but then they don't have a, the curriculum does not contain something related to emergency nurse in one school, but then in another school is there. So you need to look at that. You also need to look at um the environment you are going to study like the state you need to look at the um the city you are going to be in and um, whether it's a rural community the opportunities that are there for internship the opportunities that are there to help you learn throughout the um, the course of your career or the course of your studies if you don't look at this things and you feel like well my friend is already here so i'm going there because my friend is there you mm -hmm. go there and you say that well this is this is not interesting or this is not what i really wanted for myself so aside from um, family friends and everything you should also be looking at the impact is going to have for you after you have completed the school mm -hmm. And you should be looking at those things because most of the time people come and they be like, well, I'm going to study in, let's say, New York. New York is very expensive. Mm -hmm. But then there are opportunities there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an international student, you don't have, you, you have a limited number of hours you need to work in the United States. So if you go and study in New York, yes, the opportunities are there. But then the cost of living is high. How are you going to cater for all those stuff? And if you go to, let's say, a rural place to study, the opportunities are low. You cannot, maybe there may not be even hospitals or um, places that you can go for internships. So you should be looking at all this terrain before you conclude on a particular program. Uh -huh. Okay, so you are, you are saying that if you want to study in US, there are a lot of factors you should take into consideration. One is the state that you want to go into, which city do you want to stay, the living expenses, and even the selection of the program after school, your career goals and everything that you have been talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what what particular course or program do you think that they, they normally give scholarship in the US that somebody can be able to delve into it or something like that? Um, when it comes to programs, I think um from my experience, I think STEM programs have a lot of funding. However, oh it also depends. 
and everything is like geography based okay so stem programs can give you a lot of funding but when you go to a particular school let's say you study in university of georgia it's in an urban city it's in atlanta there are many opportunities there there are many research going on in that school because it's an r1 institution okay mm -hmm. we have classifications of schools in united states and um University of Georgia is R1. So there's high research going on there. Every time they are doing research. If you say, if you say R1, R1, mm -hmm. what does it mean? So US schools are classified as R1 or R2. So if you are in R1 school, like University of Georgia, Harvard University, Yale, those schools have a lot of um, research going on. They get a lot of funding for research. So you mm -hmm. can get funding of in those schools because every time there is research going on they focus more on the research but then our two institutions focus um, mildly on research and then they add teaching so there's not much of research going on in our two institutions they don't uh, normally get those big big grants that other schools like the higher schools get they mostly get some funding there's some funding there but then it's not it's not as huge compared to these r1 schools mm -hmm. okay so if you are doing a stem program in an r1 school a high somebody doesn't somebody doesn't even know what is stem if you see stem program what do you mean by stem okay so it's about those who are doing um science technology and mathematics if you are in any of these kind of educations like in the health sector computer science and um, engineering you are classified stem okay yes but then there are certain programs that are not classified stem like let's say you are in some arts pro uh, program you like are doing political some... science yes. sociology yes those ones are non-stem programs stem programs are like every time there is research if you are doing uh, mechanical engineering it's a stem program because you can work like in a plane you can work on planes you can work in um astronomy all those kind of stuff if you are doing something mathematics related it's computational based if you are doing health it's about people so those ones are classified stem but if okay. you're in those liberal arts sociology communication programs they are not usually considered stem programs okay yes. okay okay so if somebody is watching me the person is in health sector maybe nursing uh mid midwifery or something like that what are some of the ways that you can able to leverage on to enter into us i think that when i was discussing with you you you, are, you were more focusing on how a person can sail through the public uh, public health or something like that can you take us through how the person can able to see it through? Maybe somebody's watching us, he's a nurse or maybe a diploma. I don't know how it works, how you can able to see it through to come to the United States here. So the good thing, thank you about that for that question. The good thing about public health is that public health is kind of open for everyone, okay? Irrespective of the field you are in, whether you are in education, you are in um, business, you are in um, engineering, whatever field that you are, public health has a place for you. Mm -hmm. You can come into public health irrespective of your field. If you're a health worker, yes, that's a leverage. If you're a nurse, you have like a higher chance or you have some leverage, you have some experience that is needed. But it doesn't mean that if you studied education or you studied engineering or you studied something outside health, you cannot um, join or go to school for public health. So in the US here, we have a particular sites or i would say like an association of schools okay or public health schools they have a particular site uh, site that you do your application and it's very um simple it's easier to do um it makes everything the process run smoothly imagine that if you are doing like a different program and you are applying to five schools you need to let them send emails to about the the number of people you want them to recommend you. Let's say you want three people to recommend you for admission. So now all these five schools, everybody is going to send a link to those people to recommend you for admission. At a point, they are going to get exhausted. They'll be like, why? Only you, you want me to recommend you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in public health application, when you go to their site and you apply, um, they are going to send a link. You can apply to 10 schools, 20 schools on that site. The only thing that is needed is that 
you use three recommendation letters for all of them. Oh, okay. So what you mean is that if the person is in health sector, mm -hmm. okay, what, what you are trying to say that anyone can study public health irrespective of where you are coming from. So mm -hmm. if the person did sociology, political science, psychology, this field of getting the public health, right, in the U.S. And mm -hmm. what you are saying is that they have a link that when you go there and you apply to the schools, the only thing is that you need only three recommendations that will take care of all the schools. Is that what you mean? If I don't know. That is what I mean by that. If you oh. do an evaluation, you know when you are doing an evaluation for studies, right? When you are doing mm -hmm. a West evaluation and you are applying to five schools, you have to send it to all the five schools and you mm -hmm. have to pay for all of them. But then when you are using the SOFAS application portal, you just pay once and that's all. It goes to all the five schools, 20 schools or 15 schools that you apply on that site. In fact, today is my first time hearing that, that you yeah. can apply to U.S. schools, five schools, and you even pay an admission fee and the recommendation letters that you are going, it will run through all the... That's, I didn't know that. Even, yeah. But I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what about getting scholarship in health-related program? You know, somebody want to come to U.S. He has been trying with scholarship. Africans are watching you, Nigerians are watching you, South Africa. This is an international platform, let me say it. How is a person watching us right now who able to leverage in getting full scholarship or maybe even partial scholarship? And if the person will get partial scholarship, what are some of the ways that the person can navigate through to even get a scholarship? Somebody is watching us, he will get a partial scholarship and he will give up. Is there any way you can leverage on why should the person check public health and everything? Please, if you are watching me on Facebook, uh, YouTube and um, Twitter or TikTok. If you are watching me on TikTok, I just want you to power tap the love button and also share with other people to join. This one is just a free information that we are giving to you. I believe that one information from this platform will help you. And then if you are watching me on Facebook or YouTube or um, Twitter, what I want you to do is that after we are done with the interview, I will let you come in and then ask any question that you want. Sometimes you cannot get us one on one. So if you have us here, the link will be there, then you join us, and then you ask the question that you want. Okay, sister, go on. Okay, so funders come in many forms in the yeah, United States, okay? We have partial funding, we have full funding, we have graduate assistantship, we have um, graduate teaching assistantship, we have graduate research assistantship, we have fellowships. Mm -hmm. And then one one thing that people don't know is that in the U.S. we have what we call out of country tuition waiver. So let me start with the out of country tuition waiver. Let's say you apply to a school. Okay, I'm going to use Georgia Southern as an example. When you apply to Georgia Southern University and you get your admission, there's another form of funding that you have to apply. It's called out of country tuition waiver. What's so that? that one, no, wait, before you go on, is the school that's going to tell you to apply to that scholarship or you need to find out and apply? Sometimes the school is going to tell you, but most of the time, in, in my experience, right, you have to ask. They are going to give you a list of funding sites. They are going to tell you that these are funding sites that you should look out for. If you don't get that or you, you get your admission letter first, and you, you are still in a haste to like, because sometimes they send the admission letter two days before they send you a link of all the fundings that you need to apply. So let's say you get your admission letter now, you can send them an email right now and tell them that, well, I'm looking at funding um, opportunities. So can you send me a link or can you tell me where to go and apply? If not, you may have to wait like two days or three days time before you um get that link and other schools will tell you that you should accept admission letter so if you accept that you want to go to the school then they will send you the link to go and apply for those funding oh okay okay yeah. i see yes i see i see i see i see i see i see so what 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 is the advice that people cannot really get scholarship in ghana nigeria south africa based on the knowledge that you have so first of all, the most important thing is about your statement of purpose, okay? Some people don't know how to write a good statement of purpose. They, they like, they are all over the place. They say 500 words, and then you will see they write like half a page, and then they try to 
double spaces so that it's going to fill out the whole place. They don't talk about their experience. They don't talk about why they want to go to, into that program. They don't um, talk about why that school, even that school is important to go, like they want to go to that school. They don't talk about their future career progression in their statement of purpose. They just give just a, an overview. Other people, some I know of, an um, uh, SOP that I saw that the person, I think, copied from the internet and just fixed, uh, made some few changes and then said that um, that's all. This is my statement of purpose. You don't do that. If they tell you 1,500 words or if they tell you 500 words, it should be like that. Then another thing is those who recommend you for admission. People don't um, send or they don't let the right people recommend them for admissions. You know, you cannot let your friends recommend you. You cannot let your mother, father recommend you for admissions. You have to let somebody who knows you academically well or somebody who knows you professionally well to recommend you. And the person writing the recommendation letter may not even know what to write on your behalf. So these two things play a very major, a big factor in. Yeah, you, know, you, you are focused on getting full scholarship in, Canada, uh, in the United States. For you, you focus more on the statement of purpose. People don't read. And yesterday, I don't know if you watched my video, I was telling people that some schools will tell you how to tailor your statement of purpose. So if you don't mm -hmm. go there and read, and you say you are just writing in the other uh, statement of purpose, you are, you are lost. Some, some schools, your focus is straight, your career mm -hmm. goals, your experience and your research interest. This is Very the major good. thing they are telling you. Mm -hmm. Some will also tell you that, talk about your leadership skill, volunteerism, and how it will help you to achieve your short-term goals and long-term goals. So people don't really read. So when they go there mm -hmm. and they, they just write in this statement of purpose, actually, oh, write SOP for me. I have written SOP without any tailor. Some schools will even tell you that, not don't tell your story. Let us know the reason why you want the program. Yeah. Yeah. And these are some of the things that we will we will we will we will we will really have to um, enjoy enjoy it. Okay. So based on your experience, if people enter the public health, do you think that they can get full scholarship in the United States? Of course, of course, you can get full funding and um, go by about your school without any um, constraints when it comes to tuition fees. Okay. Um, I'm an example myself. I'm. On a scholarship, um, I graduate research assistant for an office here in my college, and I do a lot of research. As I said, I told you earlier that we have different forms of funding, and graduate research assistantship is one so of them. So you mean you are, you are on scholarship? You are on yes. scholarship right now? Okay. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, you continue. Yes, I am. So, and one thing people don't know is that when I came in, I came in with the out of country tuition waiver. So what happened was um, my school fees, let's say my school fees was around 20,000, right? And I applied for that out of country tuition waiver. So they waived around 1,000, uh, 16,000 of it for me. So it means I had to pay the 4,000. Wow. Okay, 4,000, okay. That, so that was what I used to apply for my I-20 and I got in. So when I came to the school, then I applied for a graduate research assistant and I got that. Okay. You know, the, 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 what you are saying is true. In fact, when I was also coming here, scholarship sometimes this, within the school, you get research assistant. Sometimes there are certain scholarship unless you are in the school, unless yes. you, you, you are in the university. You cannot mm -hmm. get it whilst you are in Ghana or Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that how you can be able to leverage on the scholarship you have gotten to come here. And because when I came here, yeah, I also got um, 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 is it, is it, um, research assistant at another department where I was mm -hmm. working with a professor and he was giving me money. And, you know, it, it, it is something that we want people to leverage upon it. So public health, generally, if a person is looking for public health programs, which university, can you recommend which university, how we can be able to tailor the SOP, the, the CV and all the questions as to how people are? Because we know a lot of nurses uh midwife people who want to delve into public health what are some of the advice that you can able to give to them as well so when it comes to schools eh, there are a lot of schools a lot like us and canada has over should i say five thousand schools yeah, Let's yeah, see, yeah, it doesn't yeah, get yeah. exhausted at all every day you hear about new school you'll be like ah where is this one so there are a lot of schools that do that and 
if you want to go in for public health, um, you should go to um what we call the site I'm talking about. It's called Sofas. S O P H A S. When you go to Sofas and you create your account and everything, you are going to see a lot of schools that will come with all the concentrations and the programs that they do. So when you go to the, those programs, you will see the program that you want to do. You will see the state where it is located. If it's an urban area or a rural area, you are going to see all those kind of stuff. So most important is that you do your research about the school you want to go. It's not because someone is in this school or someone went to this school, that's why you want to go there. You have to go to a school that's going to help you. A place You have to be in a place that's going to help you, a place that is safe, that is going to help you, where the faculty members help you in your research or they are, they are going to help you in your academics. There are, there are people or, you know, back home in Africa, we go to school, you have to learn, learn, learn everything by yourself. You have to go through everything. Sometimes you don't even get a lecturer or a professor to, like, help you out with anything. But over here, one thing I have noticed is that they are very friendly. You can go to them if you have any challenges pertaining to your school you can go to them and they understand they are supportive so you have to look for look out for all these things before you start your application and also you need to start very early because now things are becoming very more competitive uh -huh. you cannot say that well the deadline is next week so i'm going to apply now or the deadline is next month so i'm going to apply now even if you apply and get the admission, you know how it's also challenging when it comes to this visa, um, getting a visa date and all those kind of stuff. So you need to start very early. If you are looking at applying against next year, you have to start somewhere this year around maybe May or June. You have to get your documents in place. You have to get those who are going to recommend you. You have to start drafting some SOP and also attend their webinars, the virtual sessions that they organize try to attend them because you're going to learn a lot from them yeah uh, if you don't attend those things like, do you know do you know that in, in most africa we did, like me sometime when i was in ghana going to seminars and i i think it's a waste of time <laughs> even if even if the government has funded the program that people should attend you go and you see only 13 students and these yeah. people are the brilliant student or something like that. Those people, yeah, you go out the other day. We just, <laughs> why should I go to a seminar to do what? You people don't to. go. But when you come here, volunteerism, seminars, empowerment, presentation, one of the key things these white people look at. And mm -hmm. I've been telling people, I have a friend who got a scholarship at the University of Visit Denver or something like that. It, it, the scholarship was based because of volunteerism he did to help the community in Ghana. Mm -hmm. That, that just turned now. The scholarship was given to a person who has helped a society. Yeah. And they saw it on the CV and they gave him the full scholarship that he was telling yeah, he was talking about. So what you're saying is very, very true. You know, one thing is that people think you always need to volunteer for like a big institution or a hospital or something. And I tell people that if you're a nurse in your community, when you go to church, there are old men and women there. You can gather them every once sat, uh, Sunday morning or Sunday after church. You teach them about hypertension. That is volunteering. If you want, you can teach children in your community about mathematics, how to do mathematics, reading and comprehension. Uh -huh. All these are volunteering things. You don't need to be in a big place to say that you have volunteered for anybody. You don't need to do that. In fact, what you are saying is very, is, is very, very true. The volunteerism, I've been telling people that if you're doing your CV and volunteerism, leadership skills, community, extra curriculum is not on your CV. Me, to me, Peter, I don't think it will yield you anything. Mm -hmm. Even if you focus, because these white people, they want to know what it, have you contributed to the development of your society. Yeah. And they want to see who you are. Because mm -hmm. the knowledge that you're going to get it from here, it is not for you only. You're going to impact, transform your society. Which is one of the key things that I'm telling people that when you're doing your CV, bring volunteerism, leadership skills. Somebody will tell me that I've not done any volunteerism. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to be crafty. Mm -hmm. We craft something. You say you're a nurse. And if I tell you that, tell me one volunteerism that you have done. This one, you don't need to do it all. You know, I'm not saying you should lie, but at least your CV should present who you are. Yeah. So I can tell you that in COVID-19, I educate people on how to use nose masks, mm -hmm. how you can use uh, uh, hand sanitizer. You just yeah. put it on your CV. Yeah. Just, I don't know why people would just, if you say you're a teacher, what volunteerism have you done? I educate the children or not, how they can able to what, uh, use 
uh, mathematics, uh, you know, calculus or something to solve uh, pr problems in there. You also educate them on how, how to even do their timetable. Something that is relating to your program. If you come to abroad, you do timetable. What yeah. they also know that timetable is very significant. Some of the small, small things that you have been saying is very, very key. Like the nest. You can also say that you educate the nurses, uh, the, your community with what? The effect of teenage pregnancy on society development. Which yeah. is one of the key things. But people don't really realize all these stuff and they just write any CV. There are certain CV when you see it, they are bring their marriage, I am single, I am divorced, uh, my denomination, I want to church of Pentecost, sometimes my age. Who, who need your age for something? Oh like you know, this is what I tell you, I will tell you. Okay, my sister, go straight to the point. Now, if somebody want to get full scholarship in US mm -hmm. and he want to come maybe this year, what time do they give scholarship? And what are some of the things that the patient, as you said, that you should start drafting the document and everything. And sometimes you getting recommendation letters are very, you know, difficult in terms of um, abroad. Is there any advice you can give it to them before we pick people? So um, the first thing about what time you should start to get funding. As I said, if you're applying against, let's say you want to come in for 2024, you have to start in somewhere June. You have to start that. And also code emails. Code emails are very important. Code email means that you will send an email to, you look out for the schools you want to go to, you set, draft an email with your transcript and your CV, you send it to a professor and tell them that this is who you are, you, you've seen their research, you are interested, you want to join their research work, what they are doing in their school is of interest to you. That way you can also get scholarship. People don't know that you can send an email and get scholarship. Of course, what you're saying is true. Ball State University, I was trying to apply to Ball State University. What I did is that I sent my research interest to the secretary, the department secretary. And he told him that, hey, Peter, I've gotten a scholarship for you. Do you know what? Can you send me one page of your statement of purpose, your CV, and the reason why you want you want the department to give you the scholarship? The lady gave me a scholarship at Ball State University, graduate research assistant, that they are going to sign a contract with me every month i will be taking my stipend whilst i have not even applied to the school mm -hmm. he did it so when he was there and said that peter can you please send me your student id and i think my index number or something like that so that i can able to do the paper form for you to sign and send it to the graduate school i was like i didn't apply to the school he said no 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 peter you need to apply that time too, I was not even having any money because you know, boss, that you need to do words and those kind of stuff. So yes. I, I didn't do it. So that is the main thing. So email up. Okay, sister, somebody want to know how to send the email. Teach us what is code email. What navigate? What should come on the code email? Somebody send me a code email of three pages. I don't know. I should spend thirty minutes to read that code email. How can they draft code email? Which are the people the person should send the code email to? I want people to learn. So code email, as I said, is you telling a professor that you are a prospective student for a particular term, let's say prospective student for fall 2025, right? Then you stay, you talk about yourself, who, your name, what you are doing, the kind of work you are doing. It's not like you are, excuse my language um, or excuse what I'm saying, but it's not like, um, hello, I am a Momo vendor, so I want to know. You should tell them the degree you studied. That is what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, you studied computer engineering. You've done this, this, this. And now you've seen his research in maybe um, AI and you are interested to join his research. So you want to know if there is any space in his research or that he, want, he would like to talk to you to find out more about you and that you've enclosed your CV and your transcript for his view. So when you send that email, you are sending it to professors. So you have to go to the school site website. You look at the faculty members over there. You look at the professors. Every time when you go there, you are going to see their research interests. You are going to see what they teach. You are going to see. Sometimes you may even see if they are looking for students for the next academic year. Mm -hmm. So you go there, you read about them. You don't just take two sentences. No, you read about them. You can even go an extra mile to read about at least one of their research that they have done. Okay? You know, when you talk... 
to a professor and you tell them, oh, I've read your research and I find this disease, I have these questions for you. They, they're like, they are happy. They know that you are interested in them. Even if they don't have funding for you, they are going to tell you this professor has funding, so go there. Or I have copied a CV, so he's going to talk to you. <laughs> This is the way you get funding. It's surprising. Like it's surp it, you know that you know sometimes uh, uh, what you're saying. Is, if people can get this knowledge and they start, I'm not saying that the moment you send any professor, he's going to tell you that you're going to get funding. But the proper way of getting full scholarship in abroad, especially Canada, is through email, mm -hmm. letting them know who you are. Even sometimes there was a friend who told me that. All the professors in the department, they know him. Even the graduate, the vice chancellor of the school, the president even know him. Why? Because he has been sending emails. They want to know how passionate you are. Not yeah. saying that every time, two minutes, you send an email. Because even if somebody sends you every time, email, email, grana, you, you, you get angry. The fact is that we want people to know how you can able to what, sail through all these stuff. What you are telling me, or the email, one of the friends that I help in Ghana, mm -hmm. I completed school at Amas. And when I completed it, he was my junior at Amaniampo. So he told me he was at KNUSD. And I told him that, Peter, I want to come to the United States. And he did chemistry. And I said, oh, Charlie, you can able to check University of Maryland. Do you know why? Even that he was a second class student, but he had gotten full scholarship straight to PhD, from undergrad straight to PhD. Do you know why? <laughs> I told him that he should go to the school department look for one professor download one of the article of the professor this one is practical wisdom this one i don't know who is watching me this is the knowledge sister Aram. when i came here i was part of the graduate committee of my department and these people they sometimes when i go and they are listening i listen to them they want quality applicant they don't just want to accept anybody to come here the yeah. class of 20 when i came to here my class was only 11 students so what i told him that he should download one article and he downloaded one article and he he read it and he find a gap that he want to also add it to what, what the professor had done he criticized he critique the article of the professor which of the professor abroad will not show interest in this guy because this guy has gone further to download the article of the professor read about the professor specialization and what identify and also he critique he he challenged the professor on certain things he believed that the professor has to do what added it or filled the gap in the research. And the professor was very amazed and he had given him full scholarship. Every month he's going to take $3,700 as a student, PhD student. With the way Jimmy yeah. Kurano, he should shop every month $1,000. This guy can send $1,000 every time to home, back to Ghana. He can mm -hmm. even solve something out. So we use wisdom and knowledge in school application. I've been telling people that when you go to the school department and you say a professor, his interest is uh, maybe teenage pregnancy. Don't just say, I'm sending him because of teenage pregnancy. Sometimes you need to go further. Download the article. Read it. Critique said, Professor, I was very fascinated or I was very interested in one of your articles you published on the year 2020, uh, 2020. That was focusing on the impact of teenage pregnancy on our society development. What I found it like it aligned with my research interest. In fact, I'm intended to even look at this and this and that. Mm -hmm. This guy, you know, it is it is nice. So, sister, you continue with it. You know, the code email. Okay, why is it that Professors are not replying to code emails. Do you know why? Yes, I know a few reasons. Um, you know, people think that when because you are writing and you are not saying something, it's like people can read and not see anything harmful with that. So, sometimes the way people type the message is like they are demanding or they are being shouty about with the professors. You cannot demand for something from someone you want like you want help from so mm -hmm. the tone that you use in writing okay is very very important the tone, you know, the tone the tone okay the tone is very important how you are forming your sentences is also very important you don't just talk talk all about yourself some people would go extra mile to beg please help me otherwise my family will we are poor i know i know someone who said I beg you in the name of Jesus, please. <laughs> if you don't help me, things are very difficult here. And I, 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 I 
oh, could somebody even send a professor, please, how are you? How was your night? And uh, are you eating? Have a good day. I tell oh people God. that how can you how can you tell a professor that how was your night? <laughs> and did you have you what what are you doing today? And I beg you in the name of Jesus, please, if you don't give me scholarship, I'm from poor background. My mother have died, my father have died, I'm an orphan. Yeah. This one will not we don't give scholarship based on emotions. Mm -hmm. They are talking about intellectual discourse. A person mm -hmm. who is what showing case what some of his skills and experience, productive things that can really help you. Sister, continue. You said somebody wrote, send what? I beg you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not fan. Even yesterday, I didn't eat. Um, please, can you give me scholarship? You know, Africa, someone said our leaders are wicked. <laughs> like, <laughs> our leaders are wicked. Yeah, they are wicked. Yeah. Yeah, the, somebody will say the hardship in Ghana is very high. I just want to run away. Please, professor, mm -hmm. give me scholarship. Mm -hmm. I know you can do it. Please do it for me. Somebody can even say, I know you can the professor can do it. Please do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why sometimes I don't really recommend professors to people is that if I tell if I tell you that this professor helped me, they will go and make reference to you. Yes. And you, are the, you yes. professor, you are the one who gave Peter Bell scholarship. So please, me too. I'm also his colleagues. He told me to send you an email. Then Okono Kwakoti Wato send the professor. I don't know Okono could be a job or not. Just was sending him a bit. So I think it's one of the things that we should also focus on. So code yes. email. Yes, code email is very important. You can you can get funding from that. Um, you also need to start very early. You need to get people who will recommend you. Someone will say that, well, I'm working with my brother-in-law. Can he recommend me? You know, there is a conflict of interest over there. The person uh -huh. is your boss, but he's still your brother-in-law. Uh -huh. So you need to look at the dynamics very well about uh -huh. who is going to recommend you. And please... You see, somebody's um, admission letter was cancelled because the person created a, a, an account and recommended himself for admission. Don't ever do that. He recommended himself to do the recommendation. Yes, don't so ever do that. You call it the recommender doing the recommendation. <laughs> recommender recommend the recommendation. Okay. Mm. Don't ever do that. Make sure also that if somebody is recommending you from, like the person is in an institution like a school, University of Ghana, the email that they are going to use to recommend you should be a professional one. Okay, you should it should have something like Ghana University of Ghana dot edu dot gh, not their own personal email, unless they don't have one. Then you can go ahead with those ones. You yourself, when you are writing your code emails make sure you are using a very good email address if you say a very good email address what do you mean by that somebody will say fire um fire what's what um you know the kind of killer man dot com. sexy ama ama baby ama sweetheart at gmail.com who what professor in the u.s and canada will reply to killer my email the no, nickname at tesco baby and uh, 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 it's a sweet baby at gmail.com. Your name is Peter Bewa. Peter Bewa gmail.com. Make it official. Simple. And somebody will say, Odi Crow, na da chen da so, what de no ho na. Devi Devi Ebeye. Devi Devi Ebeye at gmail.com. Di nyame. Oh my God. So please, make sure that the email you're using is the right one. Don't go and be using a name nyama nyama email address via to do anything. Um, sister. I know somebody who makes a scholarship because of email. Do you know why? The graduate school sent him the email. The person has subscribed using the email to subscribe to Pono, Facebook, TikTok. So all the emails are coming in. You, you don't even have a professional job. You, you don't have any company. How can you receive a day 100 emails? Where, where are you going? So people don't read their emails. They don't, they don't check their spam. They don't check anything. You have applied to school. Email should be your WhatsApp. Yeah. Me, I'm active on um, um on my email more than WhatsApp. If you send me WhatsApp, it will be there like 30 days. But email, every time I'm checking my email. Because every I'm minute. Active. Yeah, every, every minute. minute. You are checking. You are checking. You the are person has subscribed to Facebook and TikTok on necessary marketing and I buy, buy jeans, buy shoes. So when the email comes from the school, you will not see it and you will miss it. Mm -hmm. This one we are telling you is true. It's true. These are serious issues. We are laughing about some of them, but then they are very, very serious. Like, 
so so serious you have to be checking your spam your everything that you do you have to be checking at least if you want to do all these things have a separate email that you are you know that for this email school or nothing you get uh. it school or nothing then you create that one for that don't go and be mixing up things otherwise you'll miss your blessings all the time you miss okay. your opportunities all the time you <laughs> so yeah as we as we are saying apply early start your application early gather your documents early some schools um especially for, for my experience with those that i help in nigeria right they would want to get their transcripts and it can take months but then they, you will see, I, oh, I want to go to school this I guess. But your transcript has not even, you've not even gotten your transcript yet. So start everything very early. All your, everything you want to do, make sure that you start fast so that you can get, gather all those documents. Then you can, when you start the application, it goes smoothly for you. Because in US, they, we have the priority deadline the priority deadline is that if you apply before that deadline you are going to get scholarship you are going to automatically consider you for scholarship but then you, if you apply after that deadline if there's any more scholarship then they will give it to you but then if there is no scholarship then you have to wait maybe someone will say. I've, I've i've been i've been telling people that me if you tell me that send me scholarship link i don't have any scholarship link me too way. i don't have any scholarship link the, the scholarship link so if you ask me peter send me scholarship link if you are really interested in us and canada i've been telling people that we don't apply to scholarship basically in the us mm -mm. there are certain schools when you get admission they will tell you to apply for the graduate assistant that one the mm -hmm. school will tell you they will send you a document and you will write why do you want to be considered for scholarship that one is there or there are certain scholarships we'll talk about needy based scholarship mm -hmm. that one it will be at the department but most scholarship in the us is automatic you don't need to apply you need to take the priority deadline, apply fast, and they will consider you. So yeah. if you tell me, Peter, send me scholarship link, me, I don't have scholarship link. The thing is that go to the school, take the two deadlines, apply fast, do your recommendation, pray, go to water it. Thank you, sister, my sister. Uh, who is this man? Um, please, you are welcome to my page. Who is this? Please turn on your camera before you come here. If you don't turn your camera, I can't see you. So you need to turn on this person is joining us from youtube uh you can use the bio link to join us when you, there's there's a link on my bio click on it and enter you come here and you ask your question here if you have any question relating to public health relating to u.s scholarship we are here to solve to help you out my sister iram is on full scholarship at um, uh, at um united states where he's sharing valuable information with us so I want you to be part of it. And then, who is this man? Hello? Youngest Atulu. Is it Atlija? Oh. Fuck him, man. Hello? Yeah. Please, we are listening. I can't see your face, but you are listening. You talk. Yeah, I'm just trying to on the... Don't worry, don't worry. You, you talk. Go on, go on. We don't have, we have time, please. Yeah, I was I was trying to find out um, how to get uh, scholarship base in the U.S. and that, but the explanation is quite clear, and okay. that, yeah, and then approach basically like the time that you should be able to apply, and of then course. of course, yeah, that, that's what that I'm is trying it. to. That is yeah. the time you need to apply. That is the most important thing. Thank you very much. You 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 connected from Facebook, um, uh, YouTube. Let me join this person, this lady um okay let me join uh is it um hello yeah Okay, so if you want to join, if you, if you have any question, you can use the link on my bio. There's a link over there if you're watching us on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook. So this live video is live on my Facebook page, Peter Bell World TV, on my YouTube page, Peter Bell World TV, and on my Twitter page, Peter Bell World. Please use the link and then come and ask any question that you want. This person, I cannot add you. I don't know why. Is it Ifa? 
Somebody is asking about the out-of-country tuition waiver. So what happens in out-of-country tuition waiver is that you, when you apply to the school, okay, and they will tell you to, and you get the admission letter, they are going to tell you to apply for um, funding. And one of them is out-of-country tuition waiver. Now, out-of-country tuition waiver, when you get it, let's say your school fees is $10,000, the school is going to take about $8,000 then you are going to pay the 2000 so the 2000 that you're paying is in-state tuition so if you are out of the country like you are going to pay in fees as international students but then when they take off those fees from it then you are going to pay like a u.s citizen or a permanent resident that's how you are going to pay that's wow. the amount of fees you'll be paying and it's cheap it's relatively cheap compared to the twelve thousand or the ten thousand that you are paying. Hello, okay. yeah. yes, sir. Yes, uh, Peter. Uh, I don't know the time, but then if it's evening, then good evening, good evening to you, everybody. I'm currently in Finland, and uh, it's it's way night here. But then let me ask a quick one. I applied for a master's in the US. Uh, I've been scheduled for a virtual interview on seventh. Uh, that is just next week, and. Uh, I'm actually looking out for a scholarship, but then I'm asking, in case I'm, I'm asked uh, during the interview how I intend to fund my education, what specific answer should I give? Because frankly speaking, I, I, I really want a scholarship. I've, I've done quite a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm in the arts. I've done quite a lot on philanthropic grounds. I've done quite a lot in the art. In my community, year in, year out, I hold events for kids in the creative arts. I mean huge event at the, at the, on the campus UEW. So I have a lot of documentations that are actually used in my application. So I've had a, quite a lot of co uh, correspondence. And I know uh, scholarship may, be, may, be, may probably uh, uh, be given, but then during the interview, when I'm asked how, how do I intend to fund it, should I be candid with them as to telling them uh, I don't have money and I want scholarship, or do I need to just say something to make them happy? Whichever way is. Do you have something for him? Um, so you have to let them know that you one of the reasons you apply to the school is because of the financial aid that the school provides. In as much as you are working, you are old, you are working, you are applying for a graduate program. So you cannot say you don't have any money saved, okay? So you let them know that in as much as you are going to fund yourself from your savings you are also hoping that you are going to get a f um, funding that is going to help you with your um, your graduate studies you should let them know that one of the reasons you are going there is because of funding and then you highlight on the experiences that you have and what you are bringing on board so you need to sell yourself in the process okay i think that makes sense you if they ask you that how are you going to find yourself? Well, as my sister said, you will let them know. Sometimes you need you need not to lie. I know somebody who told them that my uncle will sponsor me, and he lost. If your uncle will pay your school fee, then why should we give you the funding? When you you tell them that one of the reasons why is because you check the funding opportunity and you believe that the department is willing to support quality student or productive student that can really add value to the society uh, to the department and this is the reason why you believe in yourself that you are one of the applicants that see the, the 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 scholarship opportunity don't really explain that you really have money that you can able to talk you you need to be clear to them that without the funding it will be very difficult for you to achieve your career goals let mm -hmm. them know that without them they giving you the funding it will be very very difficult for you to achieve this dream you have the passion of becoming maybe a professor and this is your dream this is your passion you want to add value to your every time you'll be talking don't forget to tell something significant about your society don't be saying i i i i want to i want i want i want, I want. don't say that Let, because these white people they want to know the significant contribution you want to add to your society what are you coming back so you can explain to that your long-term goal is this and because you can't fund yourself very well you believe that the, the department has scholarship and you have seen the alumina sometimes too you can even mention one person that you have benefited from the scholarship and he's doing marvelous then go and do your research about the department mention the person name that even this person got fully funded the department and he is doing marvelous thing here so you too you want to also add value to the world 
the world stage and also contribute significantly to your career goals and all future employment opportunities. Don't just go and tell them that you can pay your school fees. Basically, while mm. you cannot pay, cannot explain pay. to them the reason why the, one of the reasons why you apply is the funding opportunities and how the funding will help you to achieve your career goals and future opportunities and how it can enable you to contribute significantly to your nation and your society. That's what you're going to say. Okay. Just, just one last question. Uh, I'm currently enrolled on an NFL program back in Ghana. Uh, I'm actually working on my thesis right now. So uh, as part, uh, I've had the opportunity to be on an exchange program here in Finland. Okay, it's, it's on an Erasmus scholarship. Mm -hmm. How does all this, okay, play on my 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 quest to to want to pursue another master's degree outside? Okay, so, Go ahead, so this is, you have very good credentials. Okay. Studying Erasmus Mundus, my guy, you have it. So you, you need to leverage on that. You need to tell them that, yes, I'm a good candidate for this master's program because my experiences even landed me here. And I've been able to do this and this and this during my studies. I've been able to help in this direction. And this is what I'm doing, even as I'm in school. This is what I'm doing. This is what this MPhil plus this master's is going to help me achieve. You need to let them know that you are not just doing two separate things. Tell them how it correlates with what you are doing. And for your future goals, for whilst you are in school, you can tell them the knowledge you've gained during your MPhil how it's going to help you in your studies, how you are going to use that knowledge to help the school, to help the professors. You need to tell them about all this thing. You like you have a very good um this in portfolio that can help. Okay. I think adding to what my sister said, it's very true. You you are doing you even had a scholarship to study at Finland, which you are you are doing currently there. So to if seven is there asking you what are you bringing on board or how are you able to leverage on this opportunity? You can tell them that based on your academic trajectory, you were being selected as part of this scholarship. And it is based on your performance and your experience, your research interest. I've been telling people that when you are doing interview with people, everything that you say, two things that you should run through your mind is research, your leadership skills, problem solving skills. Some of the key terms that people don't know is that one, talk about analytical. It, you know, you, you are bringing analytical skills, you are bringing research skills, problem solving skills, team building, communication skills, you are bringing quality. And then you mentioned some of the tools you use to analyze data because you have been doing research. What is the research interest? Why did you choose the research that you have been doing? What is the problem statement? How is this research going to fill a gap? What is it adding to the existing literature? What are you doing? What are some of the tools you can use? Is it qualitative, quantitative skills? So all this M field that you have done, it has really prepared you significantly in what the research space that you are bringing all this idea to the board is because of your, your your academic trajectory that you were able to get this opportunity and it is not everyone even you can even mention that out of thousand students only 20 students they were selected you were also part. that means that you are one of the applicants yeah. that even the world is giving you this so sometimes they want evidence-based things when you are telling them yeah on yeah. your cv if you are saying something that what what have you done you can tell them that you were able to what interview 300 students sometimes stick the number of people you have affected so you can tell them that out of thousand students who applied to this scholarship you were one of the among the five students they selected based on your academic trajectory your research experience your work experience and the things you are able to do for the society so you are bringing all this knowledge back to the department and you believe that they are going to be proud of you mm -hmm. uh, that is it if you give them this answer automatically they will fall in love with you because words contain power so the moment you speak about who you are, you sell yourself, you brand yourself, don't rush. Just take your time and speak good English sentence. Check your grammatical error. Don't say yesterday I was told in, I didn't told, I didn't know. You just take your time and then, my brother, you'll get a full scholarship. I believe in you. And if you get a scholarship, I'll be interviewing you when you arrive in the US. And I believe that you're going to get it. The day, that, the day that you finish this interview, I want to see my email, how it went, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I'll do that. Thank so, you. Hey, hey, Ryan, can I connect? Can I get your contacts? No, your yeah, email. You use the email. You use his uh, yeah. email after this so that you can get it. You can, he can give you a contact here. Okay. Thank you very much for joining my life. I believe this person. Uh, Iram, I hope you, we have helped him, right? You know. Yes, uh, we have. We have. He has good credentials, and I think 
what we said if he uses well he will get um the funding uh is it judith of uh, pari i don't know if your name please yeah. you're muted you're, you're muted okay please talk okay i've not joined for long like that so i'm just absorbing for now but if let's say you have a uh, the uh, site that i can use to apply for schools in the u.s masters masters in physics i'll be grateful if you have a link a, sorry a website that i can use to apply for studies there i'll be grateful you want, you want to study with chemistry no physics apply physics. physics masters in applied physics where did you what is your gpa where did you finish school okay i graduated from university for development studies navongo campus and my gpa was 3.778 and 3.75 sorry uh, out, out of, of 5.00 Okay, that that's the second class lower. No, second class upper. No, okay. mm -hmm. Second class upper. So, um, when did you graduate? I graduated in twenty sixteen. So, ever since you graduated, what have you been doing? Okay, I've been teaching in one senior high school. And currently, I'm doing my M-field in the same university, but I would like, if I get the opportunity to go outside and study, no problem. I'll be grateful. And aside, aside teaching, have you, have you been doing any, like, volunteering? Have you been doing any research? Yes, I'm currently doing my research. In the master's program, I'm doing at CKT Utahs. Okay. Um, so there are, there are many schools, okay? As we were, before you joined, we were saying that there are about 5,000 schools in US and Canada combined. So we can tell you schools, but you also need to make Google your friend. You have to search for schools that um, offer masters in physics or masters in quantum physics or whatever you want to study. You have to use Google to search for those ones. And then you read about them. You read about each school and know like the opportunities that are there for you. So it's all about research on your part. We can tell you this school is good. But then if, it, if you go there and it's not going to help you, it will not help you. You have to do the research yourself. There are schools in Georgia that you can look at. Or even if you think it's so big, it's wide, just take state by state, okay? Take Georgia, um, schools that offer masters in physics in Georgia. University of Georgia, you can check there. There are many schools. You just check around the state, every state, every state. You will get it. The program that you are doing, the physics that you are doing is one of the good programs, okay? It's a science course-based program. The fact okay. is that if you can able to leverage on these skills, I'm telling you, you can get a full scholarship. And you too, like you're a lady, and you're even doing another master's, which is one of the plus to you. My sister, okay. I will okay. tell you the best through that. If you are not serious, this school application, you can never achieve success. I'm telling you, the fact mm -hmm. is that I can see that you are, you are willing to study abroad. And the willing to study abroad requires wisdom and knowledge. It requires oh. education. It requires um, consistency. It requires discipline. You need to be disciplined yourself. You can buy one exercise book today, write down. Tomorrow, you start searching. One, your mobile phone, you search. Go to the department. When you type, I've been doing various videos. You can even go there and then you check. Go to the physics department. Send emails. My name is this. I did this. I want to come and do my physics. This and this and that. They will, then you start from there. Then you apply. September is coming. If you want to get scholarship, apply to the fourth semester. That is September. So, oh, the, the day is too much. <laughs> I think um, he joined us from YouTube. Uh, who is this person? Is it Mustafa? Yes, sir. Mustafa Said, please unmute your mic and let's go. 
is it Mustafa Saidu? Okay, so somebody was asking me that you cannot join. Please, when you check my bio, the video, there's a link over there. Click on the link. It will send you straight. You just type your name and then you come in. That's it. It is nothing that is very difficult for you to do. Gladys. Is it Gladys Zanzi? Zanzi. Zanzi. Okay. Okay, hello. Please, I'm listening. Oh, I just going to listen and uh, update myself with the conversations. Um, and also know what approach. I'm a lecturer in nursing, so usually I listen to some of this so I can guide my students. Hey, uh, <laughs> let, uh, Madam Gladys, a lecturer and you're on this feed. Thank you. Welcome. We are happy to have you here. As a lecturer <laughs> teaching, teaching. I'm a lecturer at the University of Ghana. Um, I teach nursing. <laughs> wow, interesting. Thank you for joining us. And I think your students your student should are also very lucky to have you to wow. listen to and tell them about it. Um, thank you, thank you so much for yeah, that. Um, this one is, is is not easy to have a lecture teaching at the University of Ghana to come to the platform. No, nobody, no <laughs> lecture will do that. Okay, uh, uh, when young people are doing things, you want to encourage them. What you are doing is very good. You are trying to make life simple and easy for others, and I find that exciting. So anytime I'll I come join to that, I get notes for my students and guide them so that they make the best choices. So that it simply means that you are also writing some of the notes, the things that we have been saying here as a lecturer. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Yes, this is this and is what I've also realized is that I'm currently attending a fellowship and I'm in Germany. And I've noticed that if people are interested in learning language, all the public schools here are free. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are able to get in into Germany and learn the language, that some of the courses are in English, okay, but others are in German. So um, if you have the opportunity to encourage those who can are willing to learn German, the opportunity there too are great because oh. US, Canada, most of them you pay fees. Yeah. But in Germany, the fees are free. Um, if you are paying anything, it's just for accommodation and your feeding. And if you have a thousand euro, you can be able to manage with the accommodation and everything. Okay. But for every semester, they expect that you contribute up to 300 to 400 euro um, to support your transportation and other things in the school. Okay. But you are allowed some hours of work, which is able to help you navigate the system. But the greatest challenge is language integration. Okay. That is the greatest challenge. So. People who are willing to dare the language uh, can also look up to uh, Germany. And then there is also another one, is it uh, Luxembourg? I'm not good at pronouncing Lose, the name. Luxembourg, Luxembourg. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, okay, Professor. Uh, thank please. you very much. Uh, I'm grateful. No, 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 no. Before you go, yeah, I, want, even I, 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 I want you to I want you to answer this question. Today I was I was having a lot of discussion on my page. People were talking about okay. this. People were talking about recommendation. Why is it that most Ghanaian lecturers find it difficult to recommend students? This one, because you're a professor at the University of Legon, I just want you to show us the reason why most of the professors, even including you, let me say that, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> find, sometimes find it difficult to recommend some of the students. And people are crying. Every day we hear that professor is not doing recommendation for me. What are some of the things that you two, you take into consideration doing recommendation for students? And what should students also do? Because we are all learning here. All right. Thanks for that question. One of the things that has been a burden is the fact that every day you need to write one recommendation or the other. And the major challenge is that, particularly for US Canada references, they require spe more specific details, which means that you should know your students. But you and I know University of Ghana, 500,000 class, you barely know them one on one. So it's, and I teach even in a professional group. So I do have personal relations with some of my students, but I can't have all of the pictorial image of all of them to be able to describe 
the details and compare them to their peers in the class. So what you are left with is their transcripts. Some of them will add CVs and then you are able to make deductions. But what has helped me over the years to be more responsive with my uh, reference uh, recommendations and references is to ask the students to send me their own draft of reference and I list out the areas in which I want them to provide information for me. And then I use that to write for them. So that's how they get feedback. So those who don't follow up and send me the information, if you send transcript and CV, I will not work on it because you need time to construct ideas and fill in and the recommendations. And sometimes do they require that you put this on a letterhead? But I know that the University of Ghana has a system. If you are not requesting the reference from directly to the lecturer through the email, then the request can be done in the school or departments have systems where you pay. And then there, there is a, an automatic uh, recommendation that is generated and given to you. Okay. But the likelihood of such recommendations are that they are not able to identify your specific strengths and address it. So that, that so, is a, you, you mean that it is generic, right? It is just the, when the, the generic ones are given, they, they are unable to deal with the specific program requirement of the individual. In fact, Professor, I am very happy to meet you on my page as a lecturer teaching at University of Ghana to come to my page. It is a great honor. In fact, uh, uh, but that is, uh, I, I will plead. I really want to talk to you personally. I, I just want your email. I don't know how to get it. I don't know how I can able to. I don't know. You connected on Facebook here, but if uh, I went to Facebook, then I went to YouTube. So I don't know which of them I uh, am using. Okay. Okay. So but, what I will do is that I I don't know if you can send me uh, because I don't know after here. I don't know, know where I'm going to get you. Again. You have so, seen my name, right? Gladys Jancy. Okay. Okay. Sure. So, I will send yeah, them, send the name. Yeah. so if you search my name uh, on Scholar, you find my details. Okay, sure. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, that's, that's I do have some works on Scholar, so you'll find my details on yeah, Scholar. Yeah, I'll send you. My name is Peter Bawa, so I'll make the subject Peter Bawa so that I'll be able to connect with you. In fact, when I come to Ghana, I'm coming to University of Ghana to check up on you. And even you can organize a seminar for me, and then I'll come and talk to your nursing school at University of Ghana. Okay? No problem. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Madam Gladys is what a professor at University of Ghana teaching nursing. He joined us to also add value to our school. Okay, let me join this one. My brother, Asempana Ababri. Bro, how are you? Yes, Peter. Senior, I'm doing well. Please, how about you? I'm fine. So, senior, yeah, senior, I want to commend your act for doing such a honest job for us. Uh, me in particular, I'm a, I'm a biomedical engineer. And then I've been writing code mails and so on. And then the closest point was gaining uh, an admission without a scholarship. So I don't know if um, you can help clarify what uh, engineers like us need to do or need to showcase. So, of course, I've been doing this for about two years now, but uh, I still find it difficult to gain a scholarship. So sometimes I even question the reality of gaining a scholarship. And I'm, I'm even perturbed now. So if you can clarify, what engineers can do you, you, you add it to this so <clears throat> my question to you is that um first of all what are some of the schools that you've been sending the code emails to okay i've tried uh uic university of illinois chicago i've tried um Mexico university uh Mexico state university yeah i've tried that um and then Washington State University here. Yeah. I've tried Washington oh. State University and then some, hey. some universities in UK, University of, University of Bristol, I've not heard from them. Um, yeah, I remember University of Bristol. For this year, University of Bristol, I've not heard from them. I applied it uh, I think in the month of February. So on average, how many code emails do you send? On average, how many code emails do you think you've sent? Like, Oh, I can like for it's, it's been for about two years now, so it will be a lot. It will be a lot. Be I can't tell you the number, but it has been a lot. Would it be up to 50? Up to 50. No, 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 50. No, five zero. No, 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 
Yes, no. 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 You've not done it. <laughs> you've not done it because I was looking like you say in a year you sent like one twenty. <laughs> You've not done anything. Hey, okay. Somebody has sent fifty. Somebody has sent fifty email. You say the person have not done anything. You know that is the truth. You see, you have to, you will send. You will send. Okay. Um, one of my students, he still he has gotten lectures and um, he has done interviews, but then he's still sending. I told him you are going to send until mm. you get visa. The reason is that you cannot mm. send okay. like. Uh, 20 code emails and say you've sent code emails. No, you have to have okay. like okay. one one particular school you can send to like 10 lecturers over there. Another school you send to 10 every week, every week send like seven. Just make mm. it that every uh, okay. I'm busy so every week, send ten, uh, seven. If you can oh. send more, send up to 10 in a week and see that by mm -hmm. the end of by mm -hmm. you are going to lecturers you are going to be having interviews and also you have to work on your cv okay you you should update okay. it the okay. there are certain things that should not be on your cv i think peter has talked about it i've mm -hmm. also talked about this about the, your, your date of birth that no need to be your research interest okay. what you have your coursework okay. should be your volunteering um, any certifications mm -hmm. that you've done if you've helped in writing paper mm -hmm. your research um, like maybe you've assisted all those kind of experiences, what is needed, okay? So you need to continue to okay. update your CV. You also need to be taking these online free courses to update yourself. And then Why can somebody get the online? Somebody is watching Mr. University today. He doesn't even know LinkedIn. The, the person has not been doing that. Every week, send seven <laughs> or more. Hmm? Send seven or more. Mm, my okay. students, my okay. students as at today, he started last year, September. As of today, he has sent over 150 code emails. When he began, from, <laughs> yeah, when he began from the beginning, he was not getting anybody, and he was like, "I'm not getting anybody. This thing is not working." I said, "Continue sending, continue sending." Then in December, he had okay. three interviews. January, he had five. And, okay. And the more you are doing that, it is building you. It is mm -hmm. shaping you. Consistent learning will build. It will be what you what you know. It will be take. Consistent learning. I know that right. some, sometimes, sometimes you make certain mistakes. Right? Sometimes you do certain mistakes and certain things. That one there, I know. But the most important thing is that mm -hmm. consistent learning. Sometimes you do interview. You know your mistake. You go there. You go to YouTube. How to even interview with professor? How to sit? How to dress? Somebody will just wear singlet. Okay. He just wear a vest okay. and he will be sitting with it. You know, you need to be professional. Let them know why you don't come out. You present. It. You know what you're doing. You can You ask questions. You know. So I go with the. I go when the name of food. The three minutes. The most second two. Now I bet that one. That one. How can you able to get scholarship? Right? No, you know, you can't. Okay. You know how you present yourself can even you know you and also your social media platforms you know okay what is your gpa mm -hmm. 3.48 3.48 that means you can you can get scholarship yeah. i believe yeah, i know somebody can. who got full scholarship with 3.4 at ucc so you can so my brother uh, uh, out, on, uh, out of four. yeah work yeah. on it and then let's take another person you can use the link to come if you want to join the stage those of you who want to join us um, who is this person? Is it Mustafa Saidu? Is it officially student? Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Hello, hello. Can yes, you sir. hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Please yeah. go. Good day to you all. Good day to you all. Uh, we really appreciate this uh, inspiring Africans uh, pro mentorship program. So I am from Nigeria. As you can see, <laughs> I am a fisheries scientist a fisheries graduate and uh, securing uh, graduates assistantship or scholarship to pursue my msc or phd so i am in my own case i am trying to ask uh what about like that cold mail cold email i used to send a cold email to some professors but i, I have like uh six uh publication in the peer-reviewed international journals so how can I use, for example, there are some professors that my, in all my publications is not maybe in line with their interest or the research that they have to perform for that scholarship. 
So how can I convince and uh, make some write-ups that will in line with their research to be to be uh, to, uh, to their research for that uh, prospective position in the in, in their laboratory? So that is my 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 my, my question. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, Mustafa. So one before, thing is that before you go on, before you go on, please, if you want to join this live session, if you're watching us on YouTube, Facebook, use the link. There's a link on my bio on the top of this video. There's a link they have written that use this link to join and ask your question. Click on it and then follow it. It will bring you here. So that I'll, I'll bring you here to ask your question. My sister, go on. Please share the live video. Let other people join. Yeah. So um, as a graduate or prospective graduate student, you need to be flexible in your research, the kind of research you want to do. You have to be flexible, okay? You have a lot of publications and they are all about certain um, things that don't align with the people you get or the professors you get. So you need to let them know in your code email that even though I'm in this field or this is my experience, I am flexible, I am open to other kinds of research and I think this my these skills that I have, the skills in this days that I have can help me in that in what you are doing. That is one. And secondly, too, you know, you need to research on the the kind of people you send these code emails to. There should be people that if you are if you are saying that your research is this, there should be people that are also doing something similar to yours or closer to what you are doing. So you need to find those people. There are a lot of them. If you are working on, let's say, um, fish life or fish head, you want to look at their brain or something. There are professors who are also doing that. So you need to, you need to look out for them. You just don't um, start sending code emails because you've seen somebody. No, you have to read on what they are doing. You have to look at the kind of grants they are on. That grant will tell you that, okay, this is what they are doing now. Okay, and um, if they tell you, oh, their research is not something that aligns with yours, you can also ask them, is there anybody in the department who is doing something which aligns with my research or which is closer to that? And if there's anybody that they are going to refer you to that person or they are going to tell you to speak to the program director who would refer you there. So be flexible. Tell them that you are open for other any other kinds of research. Also, search for people within your group, people who are doing what you are doing. And also ask questions that, is there anybody in the department who is doing this? Then there's somebody who would do that for you. Yeah, I think, Mustafa, as my sister is saying, you need to do more research. There are a lot of schools in the U.S., because fishery, you can be part of animal science programs because it is part of animal science. You know, sometimes you can tailor your CV yes, or your SOP to animal science, plant science, and those kind of. It is all part of those these sciences, and they're yes, looking at exactly. a lot of scholarship. Maybe probably you are. You need to delve into it. You need to be serious, more serious. Schools. You can't tell me that you can't get a school in the US to apply. Oh boy, that is a one year. You one class yet. You have not done your research work. You can't tell me that you can't get a school to apply in the US. If you today you said US have I think over four thousand universities, mm -hmm. you can't just tell me like how no, can you apply yes, to yes, exactly. yes, sir, exactly, sir. I'm even seeing numerous of scholarships, many. That, that, mm -hmm. That's the open so, scholarship in the too, you, 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 you but, even have but you be uh -huh. yes sir. Yes, sir. But uh at times, sir, can I uh for example, can I search a, a school and mail them without any open advert so that I can be able to send them my CV and my uh, English proficiency letter. And no, sometimes if the... Prof you don't need you don't need a, a school to open uh, this thing before you send an email. The fact is that you are, you are still, we call it school search. You are still fishing out the school that you want. For now, you want scholarship. I would advise you that from now to by June, you know the school that you are applying. You are able to make your mind, read the funding, everything, how to get by June. You know your document is ready. I guess they open it. First week of September, you save your money. Sometimes you don't even wait for free waiver or something like that. You just put it in. Then you pray recommendation because sometimes the recommendation can delay and you will not get a scholarship. So the more you do it and you put you put pressure on them, then it is it is fine. So thank you very much for joining. Um yeah, you you have to um look at the schools very well. Is it good on your cross set? Okay. Yes, please. Good evening. 
where, where are you watching me from? I'm watching you from Ghana. Actually, I have a problem with my selfie camera, my front. That's why it appears. That's why it has become black and white. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo. Video and your name. Your, your, your video and the way you come as if you are, you are like a ghost. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, using my business wow. page. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fine. My brother, go on. All right. I have an uh, HND in medical lab uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm asking about schools that you know that accept HND for masters or something and how i can apply or go about the whole process so as we are saying in schools there are many schools here and the, true to there are schools that accept hnd like um yeah. let me see one of them I don't remember it's off head, but there are many schools that accept HND. What you need to do is that you have to sacrifice and do a, an evaluation of your transcripts. You have to uh, do the, the, the transcript uh, evaluation, WES or something. Yeah, yeah WES. Mostly it's WES, but there are um, some schools now too are demanding for other um, Spectrum or something like that. Yes. So you have to do that. If you want scholarship and you have HND, that's one of the things that you need to do. Okay. You have okay. to do that evaluation. You have to gather all your documents and then you start your application. All right. Okay. And now mm -hmm. the HND, because of your camera, I just want to give you the schools. After this one, send me an email on pby190 at gmail.com or you can uh, go please. to my bio. You can, can go you to my bio. No, the no, email again. Oh, okay, no. okay. My my Facebook name, click on it. It will send you to my bio. My email is there. P okay. gmail.com. Send me a message and use the subject as good on your process. I will send you the schools for you because I know that when we leave you, you will not find the school on this one. So me now I will give you the schools, okay? So that you send okay, it. Okay, thank you. I have, I'm grateful. Me there, I have done the research for you, okay? So I will give you the schools, okay? okay? <laughs> okay, right. what, what my sister was saying is also true, but notwithstanding, you can be able to send your transcript to the graduate coordinator and ask him because there are, there are certain schools, maybe probably they will not ask you for the worst. If you have strong GPA and strong research, GPA. you know, you have a lot of things, you will not need okay. this thing. So, leverage on it and send me an email. I'll help you out. Thank you very much. Let me add this man to wait. Hey, careful. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, Peter. Sorry. Uh, good, good evening. Is that Peter? Good evening. Good evening. The friend is saying, okay, I'm sorry. I think this will be our last. Yeah. So, quick one. Then, um, when you school, okay, but then, ne, let's call us a funny pass here. When you um, when you're at thousand, okay, so he's got thirty thirty thousand dollars scholarship in the US, but then, um, we were contemplating that is it late for her to get extra scholarship so that it will be easy for her to get her visa or like um she will has she will have a lesser bank statement you don't want to and then ideally ideally can you see for a scholarship after you've gotten your admission or the best way is to start your investigation before you make your school application. I don't know if that's clear. Sorry. Um, so even with the partial, she can still go ahead and get um, funding, okay? She can still go ahead and get full funding. What is needed is that you need to ask the school if there are any other avenues for um, scholarship, if they have any scholarships that she can apply to, then she will apply to those ones first then 
you also need to look at it in a way that sometimes you have to come to the country before you can get that full funding. So we also need to look at it that you, if you can pay that um, part of the fees that is remaining, or you have a bank statement that can show that part, then the, the, she can go and apply for the visa when she gets it and she comes, then she would um, apply for the full funding or the research assistantships that are available in the school. I hope that makes sense to you. All right. Okay, my sister, people mm -hmm. are watching you. You are ladies from Ghana. You are ladies, so your people are watching you. Ladies <laughs> like you. What are you telling? I'm giving you just two minutes. What what is will be your final talk to each and everyone watching you right now? People on all my platform, four platform, they are watching you. What do you have for them? Before so, you um, what I'll say is that if you are a student, you are still in school, take your academics serious. In as much as people are getting um funding for lower GPAs, it doesn't mean that it is same for everyone. Take your academic serious. Um, have relationship with your lecturers because you are going to need them. Make sure you partake in volunteering works. Make sure you partake in um, leadership opportunities. You go to them, read and do your research very well before you start anything. And know that it's not like you just start and then you get results. There, there can be setbacks there are always setbacks on the way. Sometimes you will feel frustrated. Sometimes you'll feel like this is not going to happen. You will feel like, ah, this thing I'm doing is a waste of time. But if you are persistent and you don't give up, you are going to come out victorious. So if you are watching now and you've started the process and you feel like, oh, I, it's not going to work, so I'm passing it by, maybe you are getting nearer to your victory. So don't give up continue to do it is going to work out for you if you need help seek help from people seek advice watch youtube videos and um, watch um facebook lives anywhere you can find information take it serious and it's something will come up from it mm. if somebody wants to reach out what are the avenues the person can reach out to you um, you can reach out to me on Facebook. My Facebook name is uh, Aram Consult. You can reach out to me on TikTok. Um, my TikTok name is Aram. You can also reach out to me on YouTube. Is Talk with Amma. Wherever you reach out to me from, I would um, uh, uh, reply you. I would make sure to help you with the best of knowledge I can. Okay. Um... Let me see before we go. Mm. Let's see. Let me ask this question. He said, Please, I got seen partial, partial scholarship at $30,000, and the graduate program coordinator said, No extra money, but can come there. But can I, was it, but can come there and work and get extra money to pay for anything? Do you advise the person that the graduate coordinator is telling him that there's no money for extra? scholarship would you recommend that a person should come and then um you know pursue the, the school would you advise that can you work and pay school fees in the u.s would you advise that you have been in the u.s can the person work and pay school fees in the u.s so if this funding is not um like it doesn't come with condition okay like you are not a graduate research assistant or you are not a teaching assistant you are not doing any work for this funding then it means that you have 20 hours of work to do as an international student so the best is that we don't know the remaining fees that you need to pay for all you know this is that your school fees the whole fee is 30 000, uh, 000, and they have given you thirty thousand. it means you can work and pay for that okay but then if you are in a bigger city like let's say you're in boston and your school fees is around sixty-nine thousand or seventy thousand, and they give you thirty thousand, you cannot do 20 hours and pay for the remaining amounts so because you, have you need to, to pay rent mm -hmm. you need to feed you and your rent is coming monthly you have to pay your phone bill you have to pay for um 
electricity bill or all those stuff. So it depends. If your fees is 35000 and you are giving this, you maybe you can work and get the remaining five thousand, but then if it is around over a hundred thousand, ten thousand dollars, I don't think you can work to pay everything at the end of the semester or at the end of the year. Okay, Azuri Millis and he said that uh, please that US could give scholarship to nursing and midwifery masters. Of course, we have answered this question. Public yes. health can really help you. They give scholarship, and um, thank you very much for uh, having you. My name is Peter Bewa um we just share information i just wanted to follow her he shared some of the scholarship opportunities on her page he has been doing marvelous things sometimes today somebody advised me that peter if you do it free 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 people will not you know benefit from the value that you want to create that's why sometimes it's not because we need your money but sometimes if you have to book an appointment you need to do what it's it involves a lot of money because you also have you using time to do all these stuff but um we don't want to leverage on you that maybe you are vulnerable you want to take your money out nobody will do that mm -hmm. especially you want visa application i can't come in here and teach you visa application i will never do that because there are certain things i can't say it online unless one-on-one -on -one. because we too we are not we we, are, we don't have any qualification or any legal this in backing the claim so you, when you are talking you need to use wisdom to guide your action in as much as you're helping people that does not mean that you should be a fool a fool mm -hmm. to say anything so sometimes you need to also have a section with us if you want to have a, a appointment with me you can check my bio you can see my pa over there and then you send a distance quality information and you can also have a section with my sister here I'm follow her and also my name is peter Bell. you can reach out to me on p 19 at gmail.com p 19 at gmail.com um today is a marvelous day and i wish you all the best enjoy the rest of the day i love you bye 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 bye